welcome back to my channel. I am coming to you from Bath, which is in the UK. It's about an hour outside of London via train. And behind me, I'm staying at the McDonald Bath Spa Hotel. So yes, you heard correctly, this is a spa weekend. I am so excited, I'm in need of some R&R, &R, but it's Friday at like 12.30 p.m. I've just checked in. I was told my room will not be ready until 3.30, so I'm gonna go out and explore Bath. Now, I've been to Bath before. I've done a really great, robust blog post on Bath, but I haven't really been back in probably like a year or two, so I'm excited to just go explore, see what's great to kind of do and see, and I'm gonna take you all along with me. So, with that said, Let's go. All right, I am walking into Bath now. It's about a seven minute walk from the hotel. This road is kind of loud but I'm going to Sally Lund's uh, historic eating house, and it is apparently the oldest house in Bath, which dates back to 1483, and it's known for their famous kind of bath buns, or Sally Lund buns, um, and I went there the last time I was here, and it was so good, so I'm, they don't take bookings, but I'm really hoping I can sneak in to have a little lunch, so let's see how it goes. I'm gonna have to go try and find another option, but I've earmarked something else called Clayton's Kitchen that's like a 10 minute walk away, so wish me luck. So some first observations on Bath. I think you saw me say Sally Lund's is not open yet, which is really sad. Um, so instead, I decided to splurge on lunch and go to Clayton's Kitchen, which is consistently ranked in kind of the top restaurants in Bath. And oh my gosh, it did not disappoint. It was phenomenal. And when I was first looking at the menu outside of the restaurant, I was like, ooh, it's really expensive. Like looks like you know anywhere from like 25 to 35 pounds an entree and i was like this is very splurgy for lunch but then when i i said you know what just let's just do it and then i sat down at the table for lunch and they have a two for 20 pound or three for 25 pound lunch menu so definitely go for lunch um i think the portion sizes are the same as dinner but fantastic um, and I ended up getting this really amazing uh, kind of fried goat cheese with butternut squash starter amazing and then for my main I had like a pan fried sea bass and that was fantastic with the um, celeriac I always say that word wrong celeriac puree and some f like seasoned fennel on top 
heavenly. I ate every single bite and I had a very nice New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc with it. So yes, I very much had a treat yourself moment, but all of it in was about 33 pounds. So not too shabby. And then um, I spent most of my lunch booking trying to figure out where we're going to go for dinner because I don't know why, every time I go places in the UK I don't plan and then I'm annoyed when every place is booked. And that is so much the case in Bath. It's actually pretty crowded here. I was feeling a bit overwhelmed on the main road with how many people there were. Um, so I'm actually, um, right behind me is a hotel, part of the M Gallery collection, and they have a new place opening called Boho Marche, and I booked in for two for dinner there, and it's a Moroccan kind of Mediterranean theme, and I just went in to have like a cheeky little look at it, and it's stunning inside. So let's see how the food is, but I booked that for later tonight when I will not be dining alone, I'll actually be with, with a friend. So, but now since it's like 3 p.m. and we're losing the light I thought I would go walk over to like the Crescent area of Bath just to kind of show you it's such a beautiful area architecturally and then I figured I'd make my way back into town and maybe do a little bit of shopping before I go back to my hotel and check into the room so off we go is a row of 30 terraced houses in a crescent like shape um, it really it reminds me a bit of the architecture the crescent architecture around Regent's Park and it was designed by architect uh, John Wood between 1767 and 1774 and it's just it's beautiful it's a lot of um, notable people have lived there over the years so it has a bit of cachet there and it just makes for a really nice walk there's a gorgeous park right around it and it's definitely something you should see if you are in Bath. Remarkable this tree is at the Royal Crescent Hotel. That's really cool. So it actually goes from down there and it goes in between the windows. That's really cool. Alright, so next up, my hair is getting crazier and crazier. I'm gonna walk over to the circus, which is essentially just a big circle, and it's where some more kind of very prestigious homes and bath are, and it's just right around the corner. So thought I would share that with you. And then I'm gonna go walk back into the center of Bath and just try and see some like small, like local boutique kind of stuff to see. Maybe there's some nice kind of Christmas gifts or other items I can source. So off we go. One other thing, so the one other fun fact about the Royal Crescent, it's also deemed one of the greatest examples of Georgian architecture. So yet another reason to go check it out. And then after that, I went and walked over to the circus, which is another kind of round, kind of circular area. And actually the architect, John Wood, um, his father, also named John Wood, um, was also an architect and designed the circus as well as a number of other places in Bath. And it's also, um, it's a, it's a little bit different architecturally, but it's still that same kind of arched, circular kind of crescent architecture. And it's really lovely to see as well. So now, crazy hair and all. We're back off into the center of Bath to do a bit of shopping and honestly warm up. I'm quite freezing, so let's go see if we can find some cute boutiques. 
Um, the first place that really caught my eye was a place called The Loft, and they have all, it's um, actually a hybrid store slash cafe, which is really cool. And they had all these great kind of Danish uh, items. Um, I was really tempted by quite a few of them, but they're all like breakable things, so I gotta see if they have like an e-commerce option for the store, because I'd happily order them to be delivered to uh, my house in London. So that was quite cool to see, um, really liked that. Then after that, I went to a place called Vinegar Hill, um, which is actually a store, not a place, uh, like not a destination kind of thing. It's not like Vinegar Hill sounds like it's like a hill and bath. I don't think it is at least. Um, and I had seen the most massive queue for this store when I was walking to lunch. I was quite curious just to go check it out. And after going in, I could see why this just, it's tons and tons and tons of great kind of gift ideas and Christmas ornaments. So add that to your list as another kind of place to check out uh, there. And then I went into like um, a House of Fraser kind of uh, store property, which was called something else um, and did a bit of browsing there. Um, then went into Marks and Spencer and H&M, which were not boutiques, but just wanted to, you know, see what the sweater situation was like because I could use some more sweaters but was really lovely and just really enjoyed taking in the Christmas decor and bath all the Christmas lights are up um, and what's really spectacular at night is Bath Cathedral turns all different kinds of colors and they were actually setting up to have live music outside of the Christmas tree outside of Bath Cathedral which is quite special um, you know Bath is really known for as kind of a Christmas kind of destination to visit because they have an amazing Christmas market and of course um, lots and lots of other kind of festive things happening in the city. Now of course because of COVID I don't think the market's happening this year because it would have already been up by now but you can still kind of come and experience things like the cathedral, you can have a, you know a festive tea at the pump room and lots of other kind of great things you can do here. So um, I was actually supposed to kind of come back to the hotel to relax for a while and then go back to try out a new restaurant for dinner tonight, um, but which is called Boho Marche, which looks really cool. But unfortunately my friend just rang and she's stuck in terrible traffic and is not gonna make it in time. So we've canceled that booking. And honestly, uh, as much as I wanted to try the new restaurant, it sounded amazing. I'm still really stuffed from lunch, so I'm not too upset about that, but um, <laughs> that just means that I'm kind of either ending the vlog here because tomorrow's a spa day at the hotel. So, all right guys, so with that said, because my dinner booking was canceled, I am going to wrap up the vlog. Um, I really hope that you guys enjoyed seeing this video and enjoyed checking out what I got up to in Bath. As promised, I'll link my original blog post down below. And if I have my um, video on the McDonald um, Bath Spa Hotel ready, I'll also leave that linked down below. But if you like this video, please hit that like button. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, what you want to see more of. If you've got any questions for me, would love to answer them. So thanks again for tuning in, guys. I will see you soon.